Every field that's within a table has its own set of properties or rules that allows me as the back end user, the one who created this table, to control what they can put or do within each one of these fields here and to help them out as well. For example, I have the pay rate field. I want to be able to restrict anybody from entering in anything greater than $82 an hour. And if they do, I want to be able to prevent them from saving the record and also give them an error telling them it's got to be less than 82. Let's say the departments field. Everything in here is in caps, like CO for coach, TR for trainer, or HR for human resources. That's going to slow down the data entry because they have to use the shift key to keep these in caps. Instead, I'm going to change the properties or the rules of the department field here to allow the user to type in lowercase and when they exit the field it'll actually put everything that's in lowercase and convert it all to uppercase. So to get started I need to change my view from datasheet view here to the design view. Click on the design view button. Up at the top I have all the fields that I've created. Here I've got department and it's the name of the field, its data type and its description and I can click anywhere within this row and down below I have its corresponding properties. You can see here one of the properties or rules is that the field size can be no more than two characters, you know, HR for human resources, as opposed to, let's say, another field here that has a different data type, a yes, no. Either yes, the box is checked, they have health insurance, or, or no, they don't, and it's unchecked. So to get started, I'm going to come up here and click anywhere within this row for the department, and then come down here into its field properties in the format field, and aside from clicking down here, you can also again come up here click anywhere and hit F6 on the keyboard and it'll take your cursor up here for you and dump it down here in the field properties. Now for the format all I have to do is add the greater than symbol which is holding down the shift key and hitting the period on the keyboard and what that does is it'll automatically convert all the lowercase letters within that field to uppercase or by the same token if I want it lowercase shift comma gives me my less than symbol. So I'm going to go ahead and change it back to greater than now before we go ahead and test this, let's make a few more changes. Up here I have the abbreviation for department. Now that's fine for me as far as the back end user, the name I'd like to give it. But for the front end user, maybe they don't understand what that means. Well, to hit two birds with one stone, I can leave the name here for me. But I can come down here in the caption field and spell it out for them. What that will do is when I go ahead and change back to datasheet view, it will actually change the DEPT up as a column header as the name for that column to department. And I'll show you in just a second. One last thing I want to cover is the allow zero length field here. First of all, when I click in it, you can see over here it says allow zero length strings in this field. By default, it's set to no. What that means is that if you leave a field blank, like let's say the front end user is typing in data but decides not to enter in the data for the department, if you leave it blank, then Microsoft by default or Access is going to put in a null value, N-U-L-L. If you double click this to yes, it doesn't replace that empty field with a null value. It actually allows you to use zero length strings. Zero length strings is either a space bar, hitting the space bar on your keyboard, or hitting the enter key. For example, if you want more details here, just come and click in any one of these fields. In this case, you want it for allow zero length. Hit F1 on the keyboard here, and I'll bring up the help menu for that field. Let me maximize it, and it spells it out more down here. If you want access to store a zero length string, like a space bar or hitting the enter key, there's the enter or space bar. In any case, you can go ahead and set this to yes. So instead of storing a null value when you leave the field blank, if you just hit enter, within that field or leave a space. It'll actually store that zero length string. Well, long story short, when you get more advanced in access, you can actually pull information out by saying, look, instead of pulling information that has a null value stored in it, how about if I pull it for all the ones that have an enter value or a spacebar value? Again, they're referred to as zero length strings. In any case, close out of here. All you have to do is double click to set that to yes. Now let's go ahead and check our work. Click on the view button to change it to datasheet view. It'll ask me, do I want to save it? I'll say yes. There it is up at the top. It's no longer D-E-P-T. It's spelled out for him, the caption for department for this column. Now to test it, if I come in here any one of these records and I type in lowercase a-c, the moment I hit the tab key, it converts it automatically to uppercase. Then all I have to do to save the record is click off onto another record or, again, shift enter. And then, like I said, if I come in here and I delete this field here and I leave it blank and I go ahead and shift enter to save it, instead of Microsoft Access storing the actual null value, N-U-L-L, -L, null, it'll actually store an enter if I hit enter within this field or if I put a space bar within that field and then I shift enter to save it, it'll store that zero length character string as well. But I'll go ahead and change it back to CO for coach, shift enter to save it. 
Next, I want to be able to set the restrictions for the pay rate field here. So let's go back to our design view, click on the design view button, come to my pay rate anywhere in this row here, then come down below and let's set the validation rules. So here's the rule. It's got to be anything less than shift comma 82 and then go ahead and hit enter to accept that field or to move to the next field. Now that's all I need except the problem I'm going to run into if the front end user types in 83 and they keep getting an error it just says you can't enter that in. They're not going to have a clue what to do next so I want to spell it out for them. So if they violate this rule down below I'm going to have the validation text and it's going to say that way they know that if they violate this rule here that we have the validation text that says look just type something under 82. Below that they have what's called the required field meaning that can we leave this blank? By default it says that this field isn't required so you can leave it blank but if I double click it to yes it means that they've got to enter something in there and because of this validation rule it has to be less than 82. Let's test our work. Click on the view button be sure to save your work. Now it says that data integrity rules have been changed. In other words, I didn't have a rule before and now I'm setting a rule. So it's warning me that this may affect my records. Well, I know it's not going to affect it because all the data I have is under 82. It's actually the highest one is 81. So I'm going to go ahead and click yes and continue. Down below there's 80. Well, it's 80 here, not 81. And let's say I want to enter in 83. Shift enter. There we go. Have to enter a value under 82. Click OK. What if I want to leave it blank? Remember we said it's required, so if I delete everything and hit shift enter to save it, it says look you gotta enter in something. So I'll click OK and I'll say well we'll do 81. Shift enter and we're good to go. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only two dollars a month you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.